Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animate Orange and welcome to another Metal Earth review video. Today we are going to talk about this Freightliner dump truck model we have right here. Very recently put up a build a video for this model. This was a viewer request from quite some time back that I mistakenly thought I had already done because I thought the viewer had requested the snowplow. I think that was because I was excited to do the snowplow because it was winter time. That's how behind I am on this. But anyway, built the model, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about the experience. This is the last of the Freightliner models for me. They have four different Freightliner models. They have the long nose truck. They have the COE or cab over engine truck. They have the snowplow truck, which has similarities to this, and then they have the dump truck. And this is very long dump truck. It's not one of those short ones you might see hop around your town. This is a big guy right here. Quite long. Got a lot of wheels on this thing, which I should have known better, but I was kind of surprised. You forget about these extra little wheels right here, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't really know much about trucks. These come into play when there's a lot of weight in the truck. They provide some extra support, but I'm not certain about that. But this is a very nice, very clean looking model, and it was fun to build. It was a little bit challenging, but it wasn't overly frustrating. It wasn't frustrating. I'm not even going to say overly. It wasn't frustrating. It was a little challenging. It was a lot of fun to put together. Probably, for me, the most enjoyable of the Freightliner builds. And that's not a huge difference from the rest. I've pretty much enjoyed putting them all together, and they've all had... A bit of a challenge. One of the things about these Freightliner trucks that somebody recently commented on is the hood, the front end on most of them, with the exception of maybe the cab over engine, has a unique curved side, unique shape to it. A lot of them have like two grill pieces. You have the outer grill and kind of the inner part, which would be the radiator. And just the way that they're shaped with this extra piece on top, like a cowling or something, I'm not sure. There's a lot of similarities between the long nose, this one, and the snow plow. And it is not a difficult shape, but different shape to make. And it's a little bit different forming it. And with a little bit of practice, I feel like I've gotten it down pretty good. Oddly enough, this being the last one, I was very confident in how that I shaped this. I used some flat nose pliers to kind of carefully bend a little bit at a time to get the curve on the sides and that worked really well. I tried a few different other methods with the other trucks but this one just kind of taking those flat nose pliers and kind of going in at an angle because it's not the hood is tapered so it's not like a flat straight bend it's a little bit tapered and bending a little bit of time to making that curve and then the front flips down and you've got the grill part that goes over top and that kind of hooks on and folds on the other side and I've kind of got that method down now but unfortunately I've done and I've built all of them. Now with a little bit of practice the hood is no big deal. If it's the first one, first time you're doing it, it might take a little bit of patience, a little bit of extra patience to get it just right. It will probably be a little bit of a challenge but not a huge one. One of the first challenges for me that I ran into is, and I find it interesting they've designed it this way but it makes sense, the windshield kind of extends down into the body a bit and the dash mounts on the bottom part of the windshield section. And it makes a lot of sense because of the way the vehicle is designed, but it makes for a tight spot to kind of get that dashboard into. And the dashboard is interestingly shaped with some curves, not, not bad, but I had a little bit of a challenge getting my fingers in there to get all the tabs and whatnot lined up so that the dashboard would attach. Not a big deal, but one of the small challenges of the model. Another one of the challenges is these fender pieces on the front sides or two pieces one on top of the other and the top piece the, the ends parts curve down and over the edge and for whatever reason one side on either side slides right over the tab the other side it's a real tight bend and you've got the tab sticking out and the part has to kind of roll over it with the slot going over that tab and it's just almost out of position 
to where it doesn't want to slide in easily and if you get the bin just right it'll pop right in and go over but it takes a little bit of struggling and you want to kind of follow the curve of that the side piece to make that bend when really you kind of want to cut too sharply at first to stretch the piece out so that it will clear and go over that tab sticking out the slot will actually go over it and then you kind of push it back into the shape that it's intended to be in in the end and I struggled with that a lot. One one side was a little bit of a struggle. It, it finally fell into place. It was no big deal. The other side, I struggled with it for several minutes. I tried again and again, putting it down, taking a breath before it finally hit that sweet spot that allows the other side to roll over and the slot goes over the tab and everything is fine. Once you've done that, the second challenge is the top piece attaches to the bottom piece with one tab. And one tab connections are not my favorite thing, but it's just long enough to get it onto the side of the front body section and each piece there's a top and a bottom piece has two tabs each and they want to wiggle around and you're just going to have to be patient take your time to line them up and get them into their slots not a big deal but another small challenge into this model and then in finishing the front cab section you have this top piece that has the horns and lights or whatever they are i'm guessing these big round pieces are supposed to be horns and the instructions on how to shape them, like the sub-assembly, on how to round that end piece and how to fold the things, seems a little overcomplicated. Could be wrong. Maybe I didn't do it the way it was intended, but I basically just used a drill bit to round that front piece and fold it over at first. And then I just stuck the part on top last. I did the other lights first. I did those pieces last. And what I decided to do, and I'll have to get a close-up picture of it, is the little metal piece little stem that goes behind the lights the lights fold over and they're not centered there or or horns or whatever they are are not centered so what i did is i bent that little stem piece over to the side at an angle and then bent the light back down flat so that the light in the end was kind of centered over the center of that pole so to speak and i hear a cricket trying to sneak in here while i'm trying to film that time of year and there's not a whole lot I can do about it. And what I did doesn't really follow the instructions but I am pleased with the way it looks and it, I think it makes a lot of sense for what's going on on top of this model. You get the cab front part together, you build the frame which is pretty simple and straightforward, those come together and then it's time to start on the wheels and you basically have three different kinds of wheels. The front wheels, these little support wheels and the rear wheels. And they're each their own, like there's A, B, and C. They're each their own section. There's two front wheels. You build them. They're very straightforward. I have a hubcap on them. That hubcap piece goes exactly like you would think it would. You kind of curve the edges. You set it on top of the next piece. And the tire builds pretty much like you think it would build. When you move back to these wheels right here, you have to somewhat reverse your thinking. Because you shape a piece that is very similar to this hubcap where it rounds over but it actually rounds kind of inside out so that you're rounding towards the engraved side because it sits inside of the wheel. And I had to stop myself and correct myself because I initially started doing it just like you do the front wheels and it's different. And then you get to the back wheels and they're probably the most complicated of them all because they have a center cap that's two pieces and that connects to another piece which then connects to the wheel and then there's a back side to that wheel with a part that goes in the axle. So those are kind of the most complicated, but not terrible. Still, though, fairly straightforward. This thing keeps wanting to ride on up there. If you watched the build video, the sides of this dump truck have kind of an odd shape. It's not hard to understand, but at first it's like, what are they doing? Because the bottom of the bed curves inward, but then you have a part that angles sharply back out. And I have a bending tool that I 3D printed to try and see if that would be useful. And I tried it on this model. And the, the 3D, bend, 3D printed bending tool is not working as effectively as I would like for it to. And I used it in a couple of pieces. And then I just kind of threw it to the side and started using the, the long handle edge of the precision tweezers like I've done in the past. And if you watch my build video, you'll kind of see that piece come in and out. Because this is a long piece that you have to curve and then bend a piece down so it helps to have 
some long flat something that can grab the whole thing at one time and bend it and shape it properly. Now folding and making that shape on the bottom, a little bit of a challenge, no big deal. Once you do that, it's just adding a few pieces to the side to finish its shape out. Trim pieces up here and a couple other pieces. And then you get to the point where you put the two side pieces on the bottom piece. And this is where I run into a little bit of a disagreement with the instructions. Not to say the instructions are wrong, but they say to attach these side pieces to the bottom with a folded over tab. I folded all the pieces inward, not thinking that, or folded all the tabs inward, not thinking that much of it. And the next step is to start building this back piece, which holds up the sides and is no big deal. But in the process of trying to get that one back piece and attach it, the two sides fell in because of gravity and then slid right out of the folded over slots because once they fell in, there wasn't really much keeping them from just sliding out of place. So my solution, my immediate thought was this is ridiculous. I should just twist the tabs. It'll be a lot more secure and it doesn't really stand out very much on the bottom if you do that. So that's what I did. I straightened out the tabs. I put the pieces back on the side, the two side pieces on. I twisted the tabs and I moved forward and everything was fine. You know, after thinking about it as I'm doing editing the video, it occurred to me that it's also possible that maybe you could have folded the tabs since there's three of them, maybe fold two one way, one the other, maybe. That still leaves it a little bit open to try and slide out of place, but that might be enough to hold it securely, or you just could twist the tabs until you get the back part on, then fold them over for a cleaner look. But initially just folded them on in, didn't go well at all for me, and ended up going back and having to make it more secure so that things would stay together long enough for me to get more of the parts together for it not to just slide and fall apart. Again, not a big deal, a little bit of a challenge, but not a big deal. This back gate door is more complicated than it looks. There's a lot of pieces in there, but there are a lot of right angles and it just takes a little bit of time and then you're done. The front piece is a bit larger, same thing, a few angles, put it together, stick it on the front, and then you're done. One thing that I missed in, the, in my build, I didn't realize it until I got all the way done, thought, I'm finished now and I'm looking at the model, I'm showing it off to the camera, forgot the front bumper, the front bumper, again very simple, it's one piece, you fold the side pieces in, you lay it over the two tabs, and I just folded the tabs outwards for a clean, flattish kind of look. It was really easy to throw that part on at the very end, no big deal, it's almost like I didn't forget it, I just put it on out of order, no big deal. There are some things about this model that I really do appreciate. You've got these long side pieces on the back that add to the trim. There's, I think, there's one kind of lower down and there's this top piece. Instead of having it one long straight piece that you have to try and struggle to fold over, there are segments that you fold over one at a time. I can't tell you how much I appreciate the Metal Earth started doing that with some of their models where you have a long, flat, thin, flat piece. They segment it out so you can just use the flat nose pliers to just easily bend each piece over and just make sure when you bend them over they all line up and it's no big deal. When it's one long piece that you have to bend at the same time, there's really not a lot of tools out there to make that an easy job and it's really easy to try and use maybe long you know those pliers thinking that'll be good enough but then they don't bend it they don't bend the whole thing as evenly as you think they would and you end up with a slightly worked part that you now have to struggle to get back into shape so the fact that they segmented these really long pieces and that's something they've done in other models but I'd love to thank you so much for segmenting that out if you take your time and make sure they're all folded the right way you'll barely even notice that it's segmented and it will save you a lot of headache over trying to fold that one long thin piece just right without warping it and then warping it and then figuring out how you're going to make it look like it's not warped when really it's very hard to make it not look like it was once warped and also when you're making this frame there's a, a piece on the side of the step that has one little tiny piece that falls up on the side and has a tab and when the whole bottom side flips up against the frame that tab just falls right into place and it's beautifully designed and a wonderful little detail that I really, really enjoyed. I think is one on each side. I think it's the plate that on one side of the gas tank type thing is on. On the other side, I think it just has this little tube. There's this little detailed piece, a little tiny piece that folds up with a tab that then the whole thing flips up and it just slides into place. Beautiful detail. I love it. 
I also noticed, and it's not terribly consequential, that with the tires, when I say tires, I mean the part that you have to round that has a tread on it that you round and attach the front and sides of the wheels to. Those, those, all those tire pieces have one side is two tabs, the other side is three, so it forces you to put things on the correct side. I don't know that in the end that's consequential, but it's interesting that they do that making it so that you can't put parts on backwards because of the arrangement of the tabs or the number of tabs it was a lovely little thing to help you keep you from accidentally putting parts together the wrong way again i don't think it's really consequential i don't think there's a right and wrong way to put the tires on but then again maybe there is but it's a nice little detail that they've added in this model and one of the questions i like to ask myself when i build these models is if I had to do this again, what would I do differently? And I hate to say it, with this model, with this particular build, I really can't think of anything. And I hate that. I'd like to be able to point out something. But everything went pretty smoothly. No big mistakes, no points did I go, why did I do that? What was I thinking? Or, I really should have seen that coming. I guess if I had to find something, it would be the connections along the, between the sides and the bottom of the bed. I wouldn't try to fall and fold them all over in the same direction. I would maybe lightly twist them, get more things together, and then fold it over flat after the at least the back was on. That's the only thing I can think. If I had this to do again, what would I do differently? That's the only thing I can think of because this is a pretty straightforward and clean build. Now this build took me three hours and 50 minutes in total to put it together. I did not make any major mistakes. There were a few times, three or four times, where I started to fold apart the wrong way, caught myself pretty quick and corrected myself. So there's not a lot of wasted time in this. When I say this took me three hours and 50 minutes, it took me three hours and 50 minutes. It was a fun build. It was a fun way to wrap up or round out the Freightliner builds. Probably the most fun out of all four of them pretty straightforward and simple build and part of that might just be now that I've built three others there's a lot of similar pieces because they're all Freightliners they're all large vehicles and I kind of had it down on how it comes together it did not feel like it took almost four hours I was really surprised when I added up all the time because basically I take the footage that I have and I look at the timestamps on the all of it and I add it up because all my videos end up in segments a lot of them end up in 23 minute segments so the addition is just multiplication really easy but anyway when i added it all up and i double checked myself and i had three hours and 50 minutes i was like wow did it really take that long because it sure didn't feel like it and to me that is a sign of a good and fun build when it does not feel like it took as long as it did because you were enjoying it and you were into it and is that not part of what it's worth you have the joy of building something yourself but you also enjoyed doing it so much so that you didn't notice the time pass. So my apologies to Bigfoot Guy, who I think has changed his name to Train Guy at this point for taking so very long to get around to this model. I apologize for my mistake and not realizing the mistake until it was time to move and not being able to get back to it until very recently. I'm very sorry. If you've got requests, I've got a lot of them in a list. I'm trying to play catch up. I'm always trying to play catch up. Now the move is coming to an end, I just got the last few things out of storage today. Hopefully things will start to wind down and I can get back to work building models and making these videos on a more regular, maybe increasingly regular basis, one can hope. And I'll leave it at that. As always, thank you to my Patreon supporters for continuing to support this channel. Thank you to my viewers for watching this channel, for commenting, for interacting, and for just generally enjoying these videos, at least I hope you do. Again, thank you, and keep on keeping on.